grandmothers. They were lawmakers, doctors, political leaders, farmers, and artists. We have a great path to follow. Grandmothers, know that the strong spirit and the wisdom of our women is not lost. Your gifts remain deep in all our souls. Sisters, think what we owe our grandmothers and follow in their footsteps. Take back the power that may have slipped away. The strength of our grandmothers is continued in Sophie Pierre, chief of the St. Mary's Band in BC. Kootenai women were really the backbone of our tribe. Having an understanding of that and of our own Indian religion, that has an incredible influence on my life and it's really helped me in staying in as chief and the tribal council administrator. And there's a lot of Oh, a lot of times when you feel really bugged about things and, and then you just take the time out to do the things that you have to do with, with religion and it, you feel better. My early school years were spent in residential school. And I think one of the biggest influences of my life was a negative influence. I was really upset as, as a very small child. I couldn't have been more than seven or eight years old and I was in trouble for something or other, and one of the nuns told me that I would never amount to anything more than just all the other drunken Indians on the reserve. I mean, this was her way of, of punishing me or correcting me, I guess, and it made such an impact on me that I've always remembered it, and I've always wanted to tell her someday, <laughs> you know, well, your prediction didn't turn out. Well, not yet, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that, that's one of the influences, I guess. It, it was a negative influence, but sometimes those, you know, you can turn them around and they can be good. Sophie's leadership has much to do with the success of her band in its various business activities, ranching, timber development, and Christmas tree sales. A lot of people still have the concept that being a chief is one that's really more ceremonial than anything else. You have to be a, a good manager, administrator, Depending on what type of development your band is involved with, the chief is the one that does the negotiations with government, so you have to know what's going on. You've got to be right on top of things. I don't expect that we're going to have total cooperation from the province, you know, with this endeavor. When I was 16, I was fortunate enough to um, start on a work program in a drugstore using the cash and keeping the stock. We should try to keep it as compact. Then I, I got a full-time job with the band as, as band secretary and worked there for a while, then started working as band manager. At one point, I began to feel that I really needed more training, especially in business management. So I took business administration for two years, then I ran for chief, and I've been chief since. That's a good idea. And I think that our two high school graduates should be honored first. Catherine Casimir and Andrea Alexander, could you come forward, please? At graduation each year, the band celebrates the achievements of the students. Sophie sees this as central to the development of the whole community. For your record of initiative and graduating, we're really proud of you. And Catherine. Andrea. <laughs> Thank you. Your respect graduation, we're really proud of you. And there you go, a little keepsake from us. Big hand for them. We've got two graduates. We've got two graduates this year. Next year we're looking at four, the year after that six, and then 12. Pretty soon we're gonna have the whole Memorial Arena will be full of Indian graduates, right? But did I get them mixed up? <laughs> My mother has a, had a real lot of influence on me. She's made me so very aware of our culture and how important that is. And she's brought back into my life 
the Indian religion, which has been really important to me. It's really got me through an awful lot, you know, which was so different than having spent nine years in a Catholic residential school, you know, and just finding all of a sudden that, that there really is something else that is more meaningful. come from a tribe, we all have a culture, a language, and we've all got people that are willing to teach the young people that. So know who you are and feel good about that. Don't let negative influences, you know, from the outside get you down. Knowing who you are, as well as what your potential talents are, is the basis for a unique program in Edmonton. If you take this course, like I took courses before, I took courses that, that I never got anything out of, and so I never changed, you know? And so all of a sudden, when something like this clicked for me, well, naturally, I'm going to teach this because it worked for me, and I'm going to try it out on you, and you tell me it works for you, so there we are, eh? Lucille McLeod teaches you know, courses that prepare women for employment. Native women that's come from across right. Canada, you know, seeking jobs, and here, from Lucille, they learn some skills for getting them. I came in from, from a northern community to the city at many different times, hoping, to, maybe hoping to get something, but knowing that I wouldn't look because I didn't have the shred of confidence in my, in my abilities. I just, uh, uh, I took jobs like babysitting and, and housework, and, uh, and this is where I, w I stayed, not happily, but I did this, okay? And uh, just in order to keep a little bit of self-respect. I was the kind of person that if I made an appointment for a job interview, I never kept the appointment. Even I never m kept a too, too many appointments at all, you know? And so this was the story of my life, but I wasn't happy with it. We are not taught to compete, and so we don't know how really to sell ourselves in the employment field. If we're going to grow or if we're going to change, we have to first of all become aware of ourselves. We have to start looking inside. Then we have to start looking at the image that we have of ourselves. And oftentimes we have a low self-image. So we have to work on it so that we have a positive self-image, right? The value of the program is measured by the students themselves. Many times I used to think, oh, I can't do that. You know, this, maybe uh, I'm not good for nothing, you know. And then, um, then when I took the program in 82, it gave me that confidence because I was just going to go to school, you know, without coming here. Then I changed my mind and I came here on April 13, 1982, and uh, I was scared. <laughs> And then uh, once I started the program, it gave me that positive feeling. I never had a, like, a real job before, and I didn't know, but I, I was told that this program would help you not only get a job, but help you keep it too, so I thought that was a good place to start. And I got a job. <laughs> what are you doing now? Uh, I work part-time evenings at Kmart. I was a cashier when I started and I got promoted last year <laughs> to a supervisor and right now I'm going to school full-time during the day and where I work evenings at Kmart. You know, I don't have a university degree. I don't have, didn't graduate from high school. I, ha I can do certain things, but I have to be realistic. Right now I don't have that. So I'm going to be happy with what I've got and I'm, I'm going to give it all I have. I'm just like a preacher. <laughs> I'm almost like an evangelist. I'm obsessed with the idea of getting this across, that we can raise ourselves up. We have the potential once we take our power and our decision-making power back and put it back where it belongs. Instead of giving our power to, away to all of these people who are so willing to help us, but we need to help ourselves.
In the North, more and more Native people are taking their political power back. One of those in the forefront is Margaret Jo, the first Native woman to become a Yukon government minister. Uh, groups uh, and concerned people, individuals from the uh, from this government. Getting to where she is hasn't always been easy for Margaret. When I first started going to meetings way back in the early 70s, it was very difficult to uh, speak out. I was always amazed at uh, at people that would get up and, and speak their mind and and say what they thought and and uh, it it just you know it was just great to watch them and i would sit there and and sort of uh i guess if you got angry enough about something then you would you know you'd find yourself speaking speaking out at it and uh, I, I guess over the years you become very confident about what you're doing but uh, you certainly have to work at speaking in public it's not the easiest thing to do you have the approval of this whole house My first job was uh, dishwashing. I think I was 15 or 16 years old. Later on, when I decided that I was very smart and didn't need to go to school anymore, I quit and, and went back to, uh, to that job. I went to work in a hospital, an Indian hospital. The nursing and all of the administrative staff were, were white, of course, because none of us had those qualifications. and. We did the, the housekeeping, the kitchen work, the laundry work, and I did that for a lot of years. I really didn't think too much about, uh, about the future until years later when I was divorced and had a couple of kids and was trying to decide what I was going to do because I couldn't see myself working in the laundry for the rest of my life. I went back to school. I took my training in practical nursing, trying to uh, you know, care for two young kids and going to school, it was quite difficult, but I never, never once thought about quitting. I had to finish it, and I did. Two communities, native and non-native, live in Margaret's riding. Hi. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Where's Edna? Visits to both help keep her up to date on what's going on. It's only been in the last few years that Indians have become involved in politics in the Yukon. Hello. I haven't seen you guys for such a long time. I would strongly recommend that anybody that has interest in political issues to go for it because uh, we know what the problems are. And I think that we have a better chance of trying to make some of those changes that we've been looking at for, for years. Probably the awareness of being Indian started many years ago. I can remember being uh, belittled you know, by other people. And I could not understand it, why people thought we were different. You were put down just, you know, exactly for what you were, being an Indian. You learn to ignore the people that treat you different. People that know me now would probably never believe it, but there was a time in my life that, that I used to walk with my head down. And uh, I think it probably started when I left residential school and went into uh, into uh, public high school. But I was lucky because uh, I was a ball player and I've spent my whole life playing ball. I'm not as fast as I was when I was 15, but uh, that really helped me build up my confidence. It really did. When you're doing something that you're good at, then you feel good about yourself. What I would tell young Indian women is that uh, you can't go out there and expect somebody to give you something. If you really want to do something, you have to work at it. I can look 10, 15 years ahead when Indian women are uh, doing all kinds of important jobs. We're moving ahead, and I think that we're just starting. Many younger people are changing traditional work roles. Corinne Hunt of the Quagulf Nation is one of them. 
I'm working on a fishing boat, a commercial fishing boat on the coast here. I'm the drum person. I run the deck and the hydraulic equipment that's used to bring the net in and out of the boat. The net sits in the water for 20 minutes and then you bring it back in. You roll it back into the drum. You do that 20 times a day. In the summertime, we fish for salmon, sockeye, pinks. In the winter, we fish for herring, herring roe. It requires a lot of physical strength, but you can learn techniques in pulling or pushing or, or any, any kind of job, any physical job a woman can do if they build up enough muscle strength and you do that through the season. Initially, the first week or two is hard, but after that, you're, you're in tune. And there are a lot of young, young men that work on boats too, and they're building their physical strength up as they work, but women just do the same thing. Technically, the, the equipment on the boat is changing as well. There's a lot of hydraulic equipment used to do the physical work that was done before. When I was offered a job on the boat, it was as a cook inside. And I don't feel very good inside on the boat. It's warm, and if you're feeling a little ill, you, you don't want to stay inside. So I told him I'd work only if I could work outside on the deck. When I was growing up, I had a younger brother, and his job was to cut the grass, and mine was everything else inside. And I didn't want to set those limitations for myself. A lot of women on the boats, they, they only work inside, their, their job is limited. Women have to break out of those roles. Women first have to conceive of the idea that they can do it, that they can go out and, and if they find something interesting, if they want to fly a plane, if they want to um, work on a boat, then that should be it. That's what they should strive for. My mother was always a very strong woman. She organized a lot of community events, and um, I think in the Native communities, you'll notice that the older women, they're strong, and they influence you. Well, I'm studying anthropology because I think it helps you to understand your own culture. For a long time, the Coyotes people were lost because non-Indians try to take their culture away from them. Now people are recognizing how important it is to have the art, to have the religion that's your own, to feel comfortable with um, your life and, and your background and where your, your ancestors came from. And, it, and it's really important to hold you together. It holds you together when, you, when you're feeling like you're lost, when you're out in, in the middle of a city or you're in another country. You know that you have that body of people and ties through the society and your different cultural traits. Let me say that Indian people and the Parliamentary Task Force see self-government not only as desirable, but as necessary and totally within the realm of the possible. Roberta Jameson speaks to a university if, conference in Montreal. And how? I'll give you a good example. I, I have to keep using the one I'm most familiar with, and that's the Iroquois Confederacy. The decision-making process is consensus building, Everybody gets a vote, including women who are leaders and appoint the chiefs, and including children. Now, you know, Canada's only extended the vote to women in the last couple of decades, and the issue of children's rights is only something that you're beginning to surface. So don't tell me that Indian people cannot be fair to their own. Now, I'm not... I see ahead a time when Indian people are at last controlling their affairs again 
and I'm interested in, in making that happen, whether it's as a, a leader or as someone who tries to get cooperation amongst the governments that are outside the communities along with the ones that are inside the communities. That's where I see my role. Roberta has the distinction of being Canada's first Native woman lawyer. She traveled throughout Canada as a member of the Penner Commission on Native Self-Government. Roberta was born and still lives in Canada's largest Indian community, the Six Nations Reserve in Ontario. But she has to leave her husband and daughter often, and even from the beginning, it hasn't been easy to leave home. When I went to uh, university, I was scared, and uh, I went from a uh, totally Indian community to a non-Indian community of millions in Montreal, 500 miles from home. And I was scared and um, thought about coming home. Uh, bought writing paper to write home the very first night. And the thing that really, I think, kept me there and kept my strength, my head together, was meeting other Indian women. The fact that we shared a lot of things Humor, I think, was probably the most important thing to us. We could laugh at one another and at ourselves, even though we didn't know one another before we met in Montreal. I always knew I didn't want to live anywhere else but in my reserve. That's where I feel most secure. That's where I feel a sense of obligation. And so when I went away to school, those are things that were very much in my mind, preparing myself to come back to the community I know there are a lot of young people, young Indian women today, mm -hmm. that face, or they seem, they think they face a life that doesn't hold too many opportunities for them. Mm -hmm. They might live in a community where the unemployment is very high, few people work, suicide rate is high, alcoholism is rampant, and I think that they might feel pretty hopeless, and that what can they do, what role can they play? And I think what we need most for our children is they've got to realize that they can do anything and they can be anything. The very fact that Indian people have survived into this century is a real testimony to our strength. Sometimes make a paint from it, but then they would eat it inside. But it's kind of too early for us. It's very important to me and to my husband that our daughter know first and foremost who she is. I want her to understand values like cooperation. I don't want her to be caught up in, in competing. Some of those values, those spiritual values that we hold as a community, and we struggle to hold them in the modern world, I want her to understand them. When she has that sense of herself, I'm happy if she wants to be uh, a secretary, a mother, a a lawyer, a doctor. I have no designs for her in profession. I hope she knows who she is and she's happy whatever she does. Are you gonna make hot biscuits when you get to be a lady? Hmm? If I remember. If you remember, I hope you remember. That's why I'm teaching you. Yep. Our younger people coming up, they above all need the kind of strength and determination and inspiration that uh, an Indian sense of values will give you. Roberta doesn't just talk about Native values, she lives them. At this ceremony, her people honor her with a special award to recognize her work in the community. Roberta has utilized her academic background and personal commitment to serve her local community, Six Nations, and the larger national Indian population through a variety of roles. She traveled extensively across Canada in an effort to create an awareness and understanding among Native people and the general public. Ms. Roberta Jameson. doesn't seem to be enough to stand and say thank you for some reason. So I would like to thank you in this way. With great humility, I accept this award and its symbolism, the circle of life, 
of which women form the center, is something in which I have great belief. I would like to dedicate this award to all those Indian women, to the Cree lady who drives her moose, to the Ojibwe woman who is drying her fish tonight, to the Indian writer who has received her first rejection notice in the mail, and to the Indian artist who is struggling with her latest piece, to all the grandmothers to whom we owe the debt for the fact that we have kept our culture, and to the Creator for the spirit that lies within us all. Sometimes when I feel really kind of fed up and, and desperate, and I do, today people say, oh, you've made it, you know, everything's smooth. Well, it's not smooth. And there are hard times. And there are times when you feel lonely and like you haven't done anything and it's all worthless. And that's when I come and walk by the river and think. And, um, and I gain that strength that, listen, I'm just part of a bigger whole here. And I'm working for something, and I'm making little steps, and however little, I'm moving towards something, and I'm trying. Sisters, we have not lost our power. Like our grandmothers, we have the spirit to be strong, to use the gifts that we each own. When we are grandmothers, the younger ones will say, our grandmothers had power and used their power for the good of many nations.